First of all, congratulations to Craig Smith and Utah State. They've got a very good team. We've known that all along. It was a battle between two very good teams. And uh, Sam Merrill made a really hard shot over a great defense played by KJ. And that was the difference in the game. Malachi had a look uh, at the buzzer and kind of hit the rim a couple of times and didn't go in. So that's March Madness basketball. It just started in the conference tournament. and. Uh, we will learn from it, and we will be ready when we uh, see who we play in 10 days. Thank you, Coach. Take questions for the student-athletes first. Questions? This is for KJ. On that last possession, obviously you're guarding Merrill. He's got the ball up top. What's going through your head? Just lock up. That's what's going through my head. Do whatever you do to got to stop him from making a shot. I feel like up until the release of the shot, I was right there in every move. But props on him for making a good shot. Yanni, in the first half, you had almost a double-double. But in the second half, you only had three points and three rebounds. Uh, what sort of adjustments did Utah State make in the post? I don't know if they have made a whole lot of adjustments. Um, it's just a matter of me putting two halves together. Um, I think I performed better in the first half, and that's something I'm going to take and, and try and improve on. And I um, promise you I'm going to put two halves together once that tournament comes. So where anybody wants to answer this. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of fans who say, ah, this wasn't the worst thing in the world because you dropped to a two seed, maybe stay in the West, who knows, but it, it could have been uh, beneficial in that respect. But looking at your faces, it doesn't seem like you feel that way. Um, I think I speak for everybody when I feel like um, that shot and us taking this loss just took all the life out of us today. I wanted to cut down nets. We all wanted to cut down nets, and it was an accomplishment of ours. We weren't looking forward to the NCAA tournament. We were looking at the task at hand, and we didn't get the job done. This is Julie Jag from the Salt Lake Tribune. You had a 16-point lead on them um, in the first quarter, and uh, they were, I mean, they were totally cold. They went totally cold for about 12 minutes there. What do you feel like was behind that? Was that, um, defense that you were playing and what adjustments did they make or did you make um, that changed in the second half? Um, I think we guarded hard all game. They just made shots. I think right now I can't really think of anything else to say. They just made shots when it mattered. Malachi, what do you see on that uh, final shot there? Um, I mean, I saw a look and it missed. That's all that really matters. Um, Malachi, on that last play, it looked like you guys had something else diagrammed. Um, and when you tossed State called a timeout, you switched to a different play. Is that true? Uh, yeah, um, we switched it up at the end, and you all saw the result. Not because of the play, though. Anything else for our student athletes? Where? Go ahead. Um, as Coach Dutcher said, heading into the tournament, there's going to be a lot of games like this that go up to the very last second. What do you think there is to learn from this game moving forward as you head into the tournament? It's just a thin line between winning and losing. And as we look back on film, we'll see that we got a lot of opportunities to win, and we just didn't capitalize. So going into March, we just have to take away the mistakes and the small things and just the loose balls, the rebounds, the extra shots. We can't give that to other teams. So it's just the little things. It's a thin line, and you saw it happen today. Could you talk about the first half? It was the first time you guys didn't, um, didn't trail and you guys didn't allow 50% shooting. What, what kind of changed defensively? And the entire half, first half. Sam Merrill decided to take over the game. That's it. And then Kata had a good low post 
game in the second half. I mean, he had some shots that rang around and fell in. So Sam Merrill is, uh, I mean, he averaged 20 a game in the conference. But then he comes here, it's 27, 29, 27. So you know what it is. Marches for players, and he played great today. He made the timely shots. He made timely plays, and, and he had a great game. Over here. Uh, Dutch, you were up 24-11. They went 13 minutes not scoring. Did you feel that was kind of a missed opportunity at the time not to extend the lead at that point? No, I mean, it's both teams are playing three games in three days. There's tired legs. You know, it's a game of runs. So they made a run. The three at the end of the half was kind of big for them. You know, they cut it from 11 to 8, I think. And so gave them a little momentum. And then they got off to a good start the second half. And then it was pretty much back and forth at that point. But Sam Merrill stepped up and made great plays. I mean, uh, basically the game ended like this. Our best player had a step in th three, a step back three. He missed it. Their best player had a step in three, and he made it. And the two best, the uh, current MVP, Malachi Flynn, had a shot. It didn't go in. Sam Merrill had a shot, it went in. And so both coaches put it in their best player's hands, and uh, Malachi even had a half-court shot, looked like it was going in. So that's March basketball. So, and I thought KJ did a great job. It's, uh, Sam's a hard guy to guard. And even that one, the foul, where they caught a foul on KJ, there's a lot of contact there, and, and I thought KJ did a great job on that play, but he got called for a foul, and Sam made a big free throw. He missed one, so it gave us an opportunity well, I thought KJ played great defense on that play, too. Over here. Coach, Matt and Jordan only combined for four points today. Why do you think they weren't able to get anything going? You know, uh, Jordan, they stayed out on Jordan. He couldn't find any opportunities. You know, he was off the bounce, and they didn't want to give him any threes. You know, they, they, everyone knows that's what he does. So uh, he spaced the floor. We tried to go to him at times. Uh, but... Uh, he couldn't find any open looks on the lifts and that. They were out there quick on the catch, and, and he tried to go to the basket a few times off the bounce, but uh, didn't go in. And then Matt, you know, Matt didn't have a great game today. You know, he obviously, uh, I think he'd be the first to say that. I don't know what he was on the field. One for seven from the field, 0 for two from three. So, you know, not one of his better efforts, but like I said, it's, uh, it's three games in three days, and it, it's hard to play out there. So Matt will bounce back. Matt's been Matt's a first-team all-conference player. So he had an off game today, but I don't doubt when we uh, play our first-round opponent in the NCAA tournament, he will be ready to go. Right here, Coach. Uh, what does Malachi bring to the team when he's uh, he's having a cold shooting night and not scoring as much as usually he does? Yeah, yeah. He was he, he was not making shots tonight, and so uh, uh, I don't know if they didn't help a whole lot. You know, they want they made him try to take some shots. And that's why the three-point shooters weren't open. They were crowded in on him, you know, so they didn't, they didn't help a lot. And he had opportunities to make baskets, and he, he didn't have enough go in for us to win tonight. Over Coach, here. KJ mentioned that the team feels deflated from this loss. What do you say to them to re-energize them going forward into the tournament? I try to lift them up after the game as best I could, but they're competitors. They want to win every game. So I don't mind them being down right now. You know, they'll get over it and... The, you know, we'll give them a couple days off to rest their legs up, and we'll start getting ready for Selection Sunday and get the energy back. But right now, I don't mind that they're disappointed. You know, they're used to winning. They've only lost one game up to this point, and uh, uh, they're not used to losing, and they're disappointed when they lose. So I think that's a good thing. It shows their competitive spirit and how bad uh, they want to win and how much energy they put into winning. Are you here? You could have 13 days before you play again, which is sort of an unprecedented stretch for, for San Diego State. Uh, how do you plan to, to use those days, and how much harder does it become having to sit on a loss? I don't think it's that hard to sit on a loss. It's hard losing the conference championship, you know, uh, at, in the last uh, two seconds of the game. But uh, we'll bounce back. These, these kids, are they love basketball. So they'll be back in the gym. Then we'll get them in the gym for practice, and we'll find a way to get better. And uh, uh, you're not going to stay down that long. I mean... Uh, you look at all these conference tournaments, there's games like this all the time. It'll, you'll see it next week. And uh, teams will lose in the championships, but they'll be, they'll be ready to go for the, final, for the NCAA tournament. And that's what we will do. Last year at this time, it was way harder. We lost and our season was over. Right now, we lost and, and, and they're debating on TV right now whether we're a one or two seed. So there's not a whole lot to be upset about. We lost a really hard-fought game, but uh, uh, we'll be excited for our next round opponent. And, and excited to get into March Madness. Over here. 
Yeah, you, you kind of mentioned this at the end, Dutch, but given the resume and what happened in this championship game, as they debate a number one versus number two seed, I know you don't get to decide that, but what do you think your resume uh, should be in terms of that seed? I think at the end of the year, we'll have the best record in the country. I don't think anyone can pass it. I mean, no one's going to have fewer than two losses. And so we'll see if someone gets 36 wins and two losses. I don't know what the most games they can play. Obviously, we didn't play a full schedule. But uh, uh, we'll have the best record in the country. And, you know, I, walking out of the locker room, they had a TV on, and I know they're already debating, should we be a one or should we be a two? And some of them are saying we should be a one, and that's going to be the debate. That's going to be the fun. That's fun for you guys over the next week to speculate that. So uh, we can't control it. Uh, the conference tournaments will determine a lot who gets seated where, but uh, that's what makes this part, uh, part of the season so exciting. And when our name comes up on the board, it's whether you're 16 or 1, uh, you're excited to see your name come up. The kids are excited to see their name come up on the board. And the same thing for Utah State. Whatever seed they are, they're going to be excited when their name comes up. And uh, that's everybody in the country that's fortunate enough to make this tournament. Over here, to your right, Coach. Coach, obviously, when you talk about Utah State, everybody wants to talk about uh, the likes of uh, Sam Merrill and Ketta, but uh, in the second half there, it was Anderson and Bean's contributions that were big, particularly Bean on the boards, and of course Anderson with some big shots. Your overall thoughts on those two guys in that second half? Yeah, Anderson hit two big threes in the second half. Those were tremendous. You know, big, big uh, uplifting shots for their team. And then Bean's just, you know, Bean's what he is. He's a warrior. He plays hard all the time. He gets in there, he rebounds. You know, he makes plays, and you know, he's an unsung hero. You know, we all look at the numbers. Everyone looks at numbers, and they see Kata and Merrill, but Bean's a glue guy. And so we, everyone knows that. We have great respect for Bean as a player and, and, and try to do our best to keep him off the glass. Coach, you're talking about uh, the NCAA tournament, and I feel like this has to be asked. Um, the NBA just, just told their teams to start preparing to possibly hold games um, where there are no fans. Can you imagine an NCAA tournament or playing, what it'd be like to play in an NCAA tournament where there are no fans? Well, if they send us out east, I hope that rule goes through. And if we stay west, I hope they let the fans come. So it all depends on where we get sent. So if we get sent east, no fans. If we get sent west, everyone can come. <laughs> Time for one or two more questions right here. Uh, in the, this is a, you get a very unique turnaround in this tournament. You play two, two games in two days, and then you come back in like 16 hours and play again. They moved it up even a half hour earlier this year. How unfair is that for players? I mean, in, in a lot of these games, the shooting percentages are really low. You see a lot of tired legs. Um, I know in a perfect world, you'd like to have more rest, but is it really borderline unfair to make teams play this quickly? Yeah, yeah it's super hard. Play three straight games and, and not have a full day's recovery time, that's super hard on players. So there's no question about that. It's hard on both teams. So, uh, but it's what we deal with for conference tournaments. It's, it, it, it's what it is, and so we make the best of it. But then NCAA tournament's nothing like that. You get a day in between, you get a prep day, and you save up legs. And so, you know, the NCAA tournament's uh, a lot more fair to a small uh, team with not great depth because they get a recovery day. You know, these tournaments are really hard. And we got great depth. I thought our bench played well. They came in and gave us quality minutes. And uh, uh, obviously Utah State used a lot of their bench. They gave them quality minutes. And so, but is it fair? No, it's not, it's not fair for the kids to have to play a turnaround game in less than 24 hours. Last question, over here. Yeah, Coach, you've gone on record saying that you would prefer to stay out west. Do you prefer having a two seed in the west than a one seed in the east? I want to be a one seed, so I want to be a one seed. I want to be a one seed in the west, so we'll see what happens. I mean, I think we're good enough.